it's always such a pleasure to work with you in the Silicon Valley organization, a partnership that we share us. And it's great to be back in this facility. I was here about 12 years ago, so it has taken you that long to get over what a bad speaker I am and to lower your standards and invite me back. I want to again thank my colleague as well, Peter Loro Munoz, who is our Vice President of Tech and Innovation Policy and our General Counsel. The leadership he brings both private sector as well as public sector through his role in the Gilroy Giddy, Giddy City Council has just been outstanding. I was asked by Victor to come today because we share something in common and it's a frustration and that's too much traffic, too deteriorated of roads and not enough funding to fix them. We've learned some lessons up in our portion of the region in Santa Clara County and most recently in Santa Cruz County that I was asked to share about. So the presentation will be what we hope are key components to a competitive campaign for these countywide transportation funding measures. So with that, I'm going to jump right in, but I'm going to stress something right off the bat. Philosophically, at the Silicon Valley Leadership Group, when we try to take on an issue of this magnitude, we have some rules that we highly adhere to. One of those is a very simple one. Do people feel more ownership when they build a product or when they buy a product? So let's take a quiz. Do you feel more ownership when you build a product or buy a product? How many feel more ownership when they build a product? Think just about every hand, but I'm not wearing my glasses. How about when you buy a product? Pretty unanimous support. When we lead an effort like this, our first meeting, starts with a blank piece of paper where we will define the problem but we don't walk in with the presumption that we solely know the solution. It's messy, it's harder, but it's ultimately more effective when people are respected and valued to come together at the beginning of the process to build it rather than the end of the process simply to buy it. We go into my office, we draw a, a wagon wheel with each step, and we identify for this issue who are the stakeholders. So for traffic, who cares? And in our region, that's okay. The business community broadly defined, and in our region, that's high tech. It's chambers of commerce, real estate, realtors, etc. It's labor, it's the business community, it's neighborhood groups. We go all the way around and we identify everyone from that first meeting that needs to be at the table. And for each of those folks on the wheel, who are the most respected leaders in that constituency? The last measure that we led that culminated in November 8th of last year was three and a half years of building that coalition. Three years to build it, only five months for the actual campaign. Let's review what those component parts are. At the leadership group, I've had the pleasure now of leading 11 countywide, region, or statewide initiative campaigns. We've been fortunate with a wonderful membership of nearly 400 CEOs. We have been able to win 10 of those 11 campaigns. I learned more from the one we lost in 2006 than probably the 10 that we won. But you learn what you know in life. And as with any business decision, what is the business plan? That meant nine months ago, constructing each of those component parts. And I'm gonna review those with you today. I know we don't have a screen, 
Peter, is there a light on your computer by any chance? I know we don't have a screen, so I'm going to do my best. The first is, as Patton said, if you give me the fuel, I'll get to Berlin. You need fuel of the campaign, which is fundraising. Well, we have 1.9 million people in Santa Clara County. An anticipated voter turnout of close to 80% last year, about 800,000 likely votes. And I am, by my own admission, cheap with other people's money. I like to use the term frugal. My wife uses cheap. <laughs> so to communicate, that plan meant a $2.5 million plan to communicate with 800,000 likely voters. That's barely $3 per voter, so it was a very cost-effective campaign. But it wasn't just to come up with an overall number. It was one of the sub-goals every single week. And how are we going to get there? Granite Construction, thank you for being one of our supporters in both Measure B in Santa Clara County and Measure D in Santa Cruz County. But it takes folks who care enough and are confident enough in what our plan is to invest in the effort. 2.5 million was the goal. At the end of the campaign, we had raised 2.53 million dollars. We were able to do our entire plan without any of those last minute decisions to cut. And in the 12 final weeks of fundraising, there was only two of the 12 weeks where we hadn't met the sub goal to keep the plan completely in place for the spending goals for that week. The second part is trusted third party endorsements. Endorsements are so important. We had an ambitious goal of 200 elected officials. When we started the 2016 campaign, we didn't know we had 200 elected officials in all of Santa Clara County. But from our two U.S. Senators, our members of Congress, State Senate, State Assembly, County Board of Supervisors, mayors and council members in 15 cities and towns, school boards and special districts. We set out to achieve that goal, and we broke it. We ended up with 205 elected officials. Persons. And what we do with our elected officials, valued people, is not to lead the campaign, but to be independent validators of the campaign. When they're out meeting with their constituents, and constituents say, what do you think about that transportation tax? For them to say, you know, this is why I supported person, and to be that validating voice that can be so important. The third component part is something that we thoroughly enjoy, especially in presidential election year turnout models, where so many young people who won't vote in every election, but like to vote in presidential elections, come out. And that was a college campus campaign. There are 10 colleges and universities in Santa Clara County. We had volunteers on every campus. My alma mater of San Jose State alone, with more than 30,000 students and 7,000 faculty and staff, through that campaign, we handed out person to person 30,000 pieces of literature. Did that matter? The area around the campus and the campus. We ended up winning the campaign by 71.74% of the vote. The constituency that lives at the campus and around the campus passed it by 82% of the vote. 10 student, count, student council bodies on those 10 campuses, eight officially endorsed it, one doesn't do endorsements, one stayed neutral. 10 different newspapers for those campuses, endorsements and articles, volunteers on the campus, 
every component and part, speaking in classrooms, handing out literature, was a huge success. The fourth part was fairs and festivals and community events. We had a goal to be at 50 farmers markets throughout the 15 cities and towns in Santa Clara County. We were able to go to 51. We put together jars of jam, special ordered, that were labeled traffic jams <laughs> as a way to stand out at those fairs and festivals and get people at our tables where we handed out really tasty traffic jam, bottles of jam, along with information so that we could engage people individually. We spoke with more than 10,000 people at those 51 fairs, farmers markets, and festivals. Retail politics really work. The next is speeches and presentations. Elks and lions and all the other animals. The goal was 150 speeches to 10,000 people. At the end of the day, it was 153 speeches to 12,500 people. Those are such a core component of our strategy because again, it's retail politics, but you can find out real time what's working in your campaign. Are people looking down and texting? <laughs> After I drove an hour and a half to get here? <laughs> or are they engaged in the topic? I'm telling Anthony. <laughs> um, and what are the questions they're asking? And the messages that you're putting in your mail and in your phones and your other formal ways of communication are they working on the ground? And what do you have to respond to because of what came out in the Hollister Freelance or the Pinnacle that morning? The real-time feedback. The next, since we had such a significant portion of our measure towards Caltrain commuter rail improvements and the next segment of our BART extension to be at those train stations, with volunteers to greet every train coming and going in Santa Clara County. We have 15 stations. We wanted to make sure that we were there at least 18 different dates to hand out our literature for people who ride Caltrain. The next is media. We have 20 newspapers daily, weekly, and online that cover the cities and towns in Santa Clara County. The goal was third-party validation of editorial endorsements in all 20, as well as positive stories, op-eds, and letters to the editor in all 20. We failed, we didn't get all 20. We did get 19 <laughs> editorial endorsements that you use in your mail as well. It's not just that one day it appears, it's on your website, it's in your mail, as you target and micro-target so that the folks who read the Los Altos town crier, which is really respected in Los Altos, are getting mail with the endorsement, not just of the San Francisco Chronicle and the San Jose Mercury News, but the Los Altos town crier as well, or the Doroy Dispatch, or the Morgan The next is what our member companies did in addition to their engagement in all other aspects, and that was town halls within the companies themselves. 30 town halls, as many as 800 employees as once, where the CEO of the company stands up to introduce the topic and then validates our credibility so that real workers, private sector and public sector folks who aren't focused on politics most, if at all, in their lives are engaged in the topic at hand 
because the CEO they respect is telling them it's important to the future of their economy. The next was, in addition to town halls, communications to employees of our companies. About 40 of our companies put out communications. We don't tell our employees how to vote. We don't have a specific stand as a company. But I want to let you know I'm personally supporting this. And here are the pros and cons. You're smart. Make your own decision. 30,000 employees receive that type of message from their employers. Again, not telling them how to vote, but letting them know it was on the ballot and objectively why it was important. The last tool that we used was fun, and this is where technology plays in. One of our startup CEOs, Sangeet Peruri, formed Forged by Fire in his own local school board race, something called Voter Circle. He was running for the Los Altos School Board. Pretty small town, pretty small election. He had budgeted $2,000 to run for that first time office where his kids went to school. There were some special interest groups who didn't want him on that school board, and they spent in that small school district $100,000 and an independent expenditure campaign to defeat this young tech guy. He won. On his porch, he and his cousin designed the early version of what is a voter service. It is 21st century phone banking and precinct locking. We know how long it takes to have even 20 contacts of people opening their door, barely with their dog barking behind them as you try to slip literature into their hand in a neighborhood where overwhelmingly they don't know who you are anyway, and you only know that that's Mrs. Smith, 35-year-old independent you're handing a sheet of paper to Voter Circle changes that efficiently and effectively. What Voter Circle does is it allows you to draw down your personal database. And in your database, how many are in the voter file in the jurisdiction of the campaign you're running? For my personal database, in the voter file of Santa Clara County, were more than 5,000 folks who vote in Santa Clara County, who I have some level of relationship with. Voter Circle allows me to forge a message, always short by design. Here's why this is important. Send it out where it arrives personalized to those 5,000 plus people who know me at some level. We had nearly 100 folks send out to their personal databases the voter circle message while they were breathing a sigh of relief that we weren't asking them to phone bank or precinct block. It takes about three minutes to do. Each of those component parts has goals with weekly sub-goals to accomplish so that we never fell off track, led to an election result out of 11 campaigns, 10 wins, was the one that we're not only most proud of, but it was the most successful. 66.67 for a TA max is hard to get. We received, again, 71.74 of the more than 20 transportation sales taxes in the ballot in November 2016 in California's 58 counties, about half that won, half that went down to defeat. It was the highest margin of victory in the state. In Santa Cruz County, where we assigned my senior advisor, 
who just this last week is now the CEO of the Santa Cruz Chamber of Commerce. Five months leave to help that successful campaign after it had lost, what, three times in three decades, winning by 67.77%. These are huge undertakings. We don't rush them. Traffic is bad today. We took three and a half years because it's a lot sweeter to win than to rush an effort. With that, I'd love to open it up for conversation and try to do my best to answer any questions you have. By the way, if you heard anything if you decide to go back out again, if you heard anything that is applicable here in San Benito County, steal it. In Silicon Valley, we don't call that plagiarism. We call it sharing best practices. <laughs> <laughs> so can we open it up? <laughs>